Hello everyone, welcome and thanks again for joining me here in the Bourbon Bar. Again, my name is Carlos and I'll be your host. I'd like to thank all my likers and subscribers for my first video with E.H. Taylor. That seemed to be a pretty good hit. Today I want to talk about something a little easier to find and not so expensive, something you don't mind popping out on a Tuesday night and you're definitely not upset if it's gone by Wednesday or Thursday. And realistically, they're so light and mild, you can kind of cruise through them like that. Uh, I want to mention the 1792 small batch. Uh, it's one of my kind of personal favorites for an, any given night. Uh, no, no special occasion, but it drinks like something nicer than it really is. Uh, this is a product by Sazerac. They have quite a few, or quite a bit in that line. This isn't the only one. There's a barrel and bond, single barrel, uh, full proof, sweet wheat, high ride, port finish. They're all actually really nice expressions. Um, I definitely recommend them if you can find them for the right prices. Uh, the other one is the E.H. Taylor Rye uh, from Heaven Hill. Really, really nice. Both of them are low proof, so that's part of the reason why they're easy to drink and just super palatable. And again, you can probably cruise through without any real issues, not getting too messed up, you know. Um, the proof on that one, 94. This one's 93.7. And the best part about both of them is I bought both of these for $29, $29. $29. And that's not unrealistic. At my local Jalasco, this might be 31 and this might be 32, uh, give or take a dollar or two. But in any aggressive liquor store or high volume one, you might be lucky enough to get it for 29. So I wanted to mention something with a little more value today and a little easier to find that, you know, isn't going to be a big deal or too tough for you to find. And I'm in Illinois, so maybe I have a little bit of an advantage, but I, I don't see why anyone should have a problem getting these, and you definitely shouldn't be getting smoked or marked up on the prices with them. So I guess I'll start with the 1792 small batch. Uh, I'll get into the nose a little bit, I have a sip, and then I'll kind of go side by with the Elijah Craig. I know that's a rye and this is a bourbon, but again, I just wanted to mention a couple things with value that really drink like better quality than you really expect. So I'm going for the nose and we'll go from there. Again, my Glen Karen glass, my favorite. Get a nice waft, and I always like to swirl it, see if it can develop any legs, and see what I can get out of that. Off the nose, surprising little rye spice, little caramel. A little vanilla and oak. It's pretty simple. It's, this one is not going to keep you guessing too hard. It's what you smell or what you taste is what you get. It, it's not too gonna, It's not going to have you guessing for days what you're tasting. Sweet. Spicy, the spice would be from that rye. Sweet, caramel, vanilla. I can't completely make out what fruit note. I, I, I don't wanna sound like a fool spitballing, but there is, there is a fruity note to it that's not, when I say sweetness, you know, caramel, vanilla is initially what most people think and sometimes brown sugar, stuff like that, but it's not just that. There is a little sweet fruitiness to it and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I can't put my my man, I can't put my finger on it. Light, mellow, finish is pretty quick, or I shouldn't say quick, but it doesn't have that long lasting release of flavors. Once you get through the rye and the sweets of the vanilla, finishes with a little dry oak and then kind of sweet again and it's kind of gone after that, which is nice. It's, it's a good intro whiskey to one of your friends maybe that doesn't drink bourbon neat or even if you want to serve it to them on the rocks, they'd be really, really pleasantly surprised how smooth and easy going that is. And again, for $30, I think that's gonna be the title of my show, Best Whiskey for $30. Or not show, name of this episode to be specific.
Actually, I'm going to leave a little just so I can come back to it after I get into the Elijah Rye. Right away, it's got some of those rye features that I like, like a, like a black pepper, a little spice. There is a sweetness that it gives off in the nose too, but let me get back to it. A little herbal. This one's got a fruit too, and I'd almost say like a like a red apple skin, or definitely in the apple family, like just of the fruit note that I'm getting. Really nice nose. Neither of these carry an age statement, but both of them drink and feel like something of a good like at least this feels like it's at least six years, and I would say same for this. They. Both will impress you for not carrying an age statement. That is so nice. Sweet. Caramel. allspice this one has a little more of a long-lasting finish it doesn't fade out so quick I'm getting some of the oak some of the rye spice is back I mean I'm still that's very impressive for a $30 bottle still softly releasing kind of that sweet allspice flavor is kind of the last thing I'm getting now. And this one, when I gave a swirl, this one actually kind of builds some legs. More so than this, but these are not going to be big, huge legs like the E.H. Taylor, some of the barrel-proof stuff that I like. Um, not that it's a bad thing, it's just something I look for. The color on this is a lot richer, too. It's got a nice, a nice amber color to it. The nose is, is beautiful. It's bright, herbal and, and peppery. It, it's kind of a, one of a perfect ride, what, what you would be looking for. Black pepper, sweet, allspice, and like butterscotch. Again, still releasing, so I'm still getting that kind of sweet, soft finish. If I had to choose between the two, I would definitely lean towards the Elijah Rye. That's just my preference, but a Rye guy, I. I can't see why they wouldn't love that. And I have to be honest, that one I opened a week ago. I am one to open a bottle, taste it, and then come back again a few weeks later, a week or two later, kind of depending on, if it's higher proof or higher age, I do like to let it get more than a week. This with no age statement, a week is all it needs. And I know you guys might see this decanter right here, and that's kind of one of, that's a great tool for something that say, I open this, afternoon and by dinner time you made all the advancement i'm looking for by giving it a week to breathe the cap on zero burn in the mouth no hug going down it's it's flawless on that aspect it's just so smooth to go down 
but you still get the release of a higher quality, more expensive item. And for $29, I really, really find that rye hard to beat. I would strongly recommend both of these and maybe even someone that's newer to rye that doesn't like rye. I would start with that. It's smooth, it's sweet, again, no burn. When people don't wanna burn or people are scared of a little heat, both of these are gonna be sensitive to that, even though they're not 80 proof, but you know, what really top-notch whiskey is 80 proof. So that being said, I don't know, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with these and I would highly recommend these to someone newer or someone that's been drinking for a while and Maybe it just overlooks them, thinking, ah, oh, it's just a small batch, ah, oh, it's just Elijah Craig. It's not the 18-year, it's not the barrel proof or anything like that, but I wouldn't be so quick to dismiss it. And at that price point of $29, what do you have to lose? You sometimes spend 40, 50, 60, 80 bucks on stuff that you come home with and you're disappointed. I, I'm very confident if, kind of depending on where you're at and preferences and tastes, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with these. And if you're like me, worst case you don't like it, Great Old Fashions or Manhattans or Whiskey Sour or something, at, at the least you will use it. And I think they're really, really great options and something you should consider trying neat or on the rocks or splash of water, whatever your drinking preferences are. I know everyone's a little different. I know I'm a straight up neat guy, but... Again, everyone's got their preferences. There's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to have just a couple tastes here left, and we'll get to wrapping up the second episode here. Actually, before I do that, I do want to finish this small batch. Really awesome, sweet vanilla nose on this. I know I mentioned heat on the on the Elijah. This one, there's a subtle warmth in the mouth, not hot. I'm going down. It's beautiful. There's nothing. This one is definitely more on the light to mild medium, and this is a true medium body. It it doesn't end so fast on the finish, and I think you'd all really be impressed. Um, the awards, this one's very new. This came out a year or two ago. It's pretty new from Heaven Hill, brand new, or one of the newest of the Elijah Craig lineup. Uh, the 1792 has gone through uh, a couple name changes since it's been around. Uh, Ridgemont Reserve 1792, and then it changed its name again. It used to carry an age statement of eight years. It dropped that. I've never had the previous batch or any of the older Ridgemont Reserves. But that is fantastic, and I would still recommend it. And uh, I don't think anyone here would be disappointed with something that nice. Not, I didn't see too many awards on this. I'm not too concerned with it. It's a $29 bottle. You're not looking for raving awards. It, uh, excuse me. I'm looking for awards on stuff that's incredibly allocated and that you're you know, spitting up some good money to get your hands on. This one, it has a couple already out of the gates. It does have a couple. Nothing crazy. It, it's, um, I believe it got like number seven in Whiskey Advocate or Whiskey Bible for 2020. So that's pretty respectable. It's in the top 10 for a year's release worth of whiskey. And I backed that up all day. I mean, I wouldn't call that my number one rye. I wouldn't call that my top whiskey. I wouldn't call either of these my top. But when you're talking under $30, again, I'd have a hard, hard time finding something better. And I'm not talking barrel proof. I have a couple barrel proofs that are different or high proof stuff that, again, I'll, I'd be surprised and I think you would as well. But under $30, regular release, low proof, great quality. I think these are great, great either starters or maybe more of just everyday drinkers so you don't have to touch some of your big bad boys and worry about, oh man, I opened it, now I gotta drink it. Um, otherwise, I'd like to thank you all again. Uh, great shooting and showing you guys some of my stuff. Um, please like and subscribe and can't wait to bring more content to you guys soon.
Thank you so much.